CNN and MSNBC are aghast. They're shocked. They drop their monocles because they're surprised that black voters might be considering voting for Trump. Oh, no. Goodness gracious, Cretaceous. CNN and MSNBC and the vote blue no matter who crowd are crying in the corner. My goodness, say it ain't so that black voters, black people might vote for Trump. Now, everybody has a right to vote however which way they want. I encourage you, my audience, to vote however which way you want. The world's your oyster on this one, my lovelies, my mornings, my sunshines. Vote however which way you want. We here at Hard Lens Media encourage it. And yes, Democratic voters, vote blue no matter who. I encourage my viewing audience to also share this perspective with their friends and neighbors so that we can live rent-free in your head. Vote however which way you want. But first, a beginning is a very delicate time. I think it's important that we bring up this video from last month, March 27th to be more precise, where CNN shocked that the, that, that, that the, the black vote will be there, or, or they're saying that black the black vote will be there for Joe Biden this election because they're not worried about black voters going to Trump. But this was a month ago. One month ago. They won't be singing that song, that tune, when I play this next video here that will be following up. But first, let's play this video right here. Let's see what is going on. There is some polling to suggest that Trump is gaining their support. You had your fellow South Carolinian James Clyburn in January saying that Biden's message was not breaking through the MAGA wall, so to speak. Has Biden's message done anything to change that? Well, I, I be fundamentally believe, as in past elections, the African-American community, the black vote, will be there for Joe Biden in this election. When we look at what he has done and accomplished. Are you sure about that? Hmm? You sure? You positive? Because this just happened. Full discussion on Trump support among the black electorate might actually be growing. Shout out to Case Study QB. He posted this yesterday, and it's mwah, it's beautiful. Mwah, it's beautiful. It's delicious. It's hilarious. Because never forget Joe Biden saying to Charlemagne the God <clears throat> in these exact words, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. Well, okay. We are a little less than seven months away from Election Day, and this is apparently a thing now. Trump supporters using artificial intelligence to... <laughs> <laughs> now, these pictures are hilarious. They're funny. It's funny. I kind of wish that they were real just to trigger the libs, but don't worry. We got some delicious videos coming up very soon. Generate pictures of Trump surrounded by black supporters, I suppose, <laughs> manifesting the close relationship they would like Trump to have with the black community. Meanwhile, Trump himself is trying to make inroads with the back black voters in the most awkward way possible, like telling a room full of black conservatives in South Carolina that black people are embracing Trump because of his mugshot. <laughs> <laughs> and only Trump could get away with that. And yet, despite the transparently awful strategies here, it appears that Trump's support among the black electorate may actually be growing. A new Wall Street Journal poll finds that 11% of black women in swing states said they are either definitely or probably going to vote for Donald Trump. That is compared to 6% of black women nationwide who said they would vote for Trump, according to a survey from the AP in 2020. Meanwhile, 30% of black men in swing states say they will vote for Trump in the upcoming election, compared to the 12% nationwide in that 2020 AP survey. These are devastating numbers to Democrats. Democrats, by the way, here in Chicago, there is an ever-growing movement here in the city amongst the black community that has been extremely critical of the policies of Mayor Brandon Johnson, as well as Governor Pritzker. As I said before, Chicago is a hyper-segregated city, and just because we have Democrats in office does not make this a liberal paradise. In fact, Chicago's history, brutality, racism, and bigotry 
can even make many of the states that implemented Jim Crow blush and be shocked at just how brutal and racist our system here in this city truly could be. Look into Chicago's history, folks. It's not rainbows and sunshines, and there's no utopia here. This is a cold, concrete city, and the DNC convention is going to be right here between August 19th through the 22nd. We here at Hardlands Media will be covering it. Remember, in 2020, Donald Trump won just 8% of black voters overall, again, according to that same survey. So the uptick in support here in crucial swing states could be meaningful in what is expected to be a tight, tight race. For their recent special, Black Men in America, The Road to 2024, my MSNBC colleagues Tremaine Lee and Charles Coleman talked to black men about why some of them might choose Trump. Take a listen. Well, Benny, you caught a lot. You know where I'm going. Yeah, I know where you're going. You know where I'm going. You caught a lot of heat about saying that you would support Trump. Do you still feel that way? That's what I'm going to say. I learned a lot of that day. But I'm what is Al Sharpton doing there? No, seriously, seriously, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait a minute, listen. It's, this is something that RBN brought up, okay? Something that RBN brought up, and I know that they could say it a lot better than me. But but people like Al Sharpton, you know, and so many others who are part of the civil rights movement, who stood alongside Dr. King and Malcolm X and many other activists who are no longer here with us, I, I do have to question... Really, how could they get so comfortable with corporate media? How can they just get so comfortable with the Democratic Party? Mind you, the Democratic Party during the civil rights era was not everybody's best friend. You know, Lyndon, G Lyndon B. Johnson hesitantly signed the Civil Rights Act. He said, I do this, we lose the South. Never forget that. Democrats weren't your friends or your buddies. They weren't your pals. Joe Biden... A Democrat went on record saying he didn't want his white kids to be with black kids. He said it. Honestly, that just comes from frustration about, you know, things not being right in my community. OK. And, and wanting to try it a different way. You know what I'm saying? But what I learned, you know, I'm, I'm not a political person. I'm just boots on the ground in the city every day. And it's like there's very few changes that reach down that trickle down in our community. I got a lot of flack back from that. But what I realized this. I did realize a lot of black people voted Trump. They just don't put it out there like I did. We're going to talk about what a shift in black support for Donald Trump could portend in November with Charles Coleman right after this break. I don't know Trump personally. I don't know nothing about him. The only thing I've heard people say in a conversation when it comes to him is that at least you know what his agenda is because he tells you. That's what yeah. it is. And, you know, like they say, the devil you know is is better than the one you don't. Know. Like, I've never voted for him, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I've heard the conversations. That was hip-hop artist Jeezy earlier this year speaking candidly to Charles Coleman and Tremaine Lee, co-hosts of the MSNBC News special, Black Men in America, The Road to 2024. They're pandering. They're pandering the black votes. That's what they're trying to do. They're, 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 trying, they're trying to tell black voters, please give the Democrats a second chance. Please give us another chance. Please, 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 pretty please. No, it's stupid. It's beyond stupid. And Jeezy's remarks about black voters' openness to Donald Trump is a warning to Democrats, one which is only buttressed by new polling today that shows Trump eating into Biden's support among black men and black women. Joining me now is Charles Coleman, civil rights attorney and co-host of Black Men in America, The Road to 2024, which is currently streaming on Peacock. Charles. Ah, yes. It's, it's all streaming on Peacock, right? The network we all want to go to. Charles, thank you for being here. We thought of you immediately when we got these numbers out. And, like, who can make sense of this? What appears to be an increase in black support, both black men and black women, a 30% of... I want to give a shout-out. Democrats, with, uh, this is from Bad Cookies. Democrats, without a doubt, have the belief that black people owe the Democrats their vote. Yep, there you go. And, of course, Bad Cookies writes again, I'm shocked, shocked that they aren't trying to shame them into voting Democrat. Don't worry, they will. They will. Trust me in it. And Cobra Commander says, good trouble, black man. Black progressives who sell out to the, sell out the black community. Of black males in swing states interested in Donald Trump. Um, what do you make of that? 
Well, first of all, I think that it's important that we contextualize the numbers so that we don't paint black men or black women, for that matter, as the scapegoats. At the end of the day, white America can and will determine the outcome of this election. I think that the critical demographics of both black men and black women are going to be very important for Joe Biden to seize upon if he wants to be reelected because he's having trouble elsewhere. Now, when you're talking about black men, there are two main reasons, Alex, why the message is not landing. The first one is there is not an acknowledgement or a real investment in saying, look, we know that we have failed in a lot of regards and we have a lot of work to do. Oftentimes, the messages that are crafted look forward without an acknowledgement of where we are and what is missing. And I think that is something that most black men are having a problem connecting to. The other sort of fail that I think that the Biden administration is doing, or the campaign at least, is this notion of trying to sell the preservation of democracy. If you're a group for whom democracy has not actually worked or you do not believe that democracy has protected you, mm. then losing it without discussing what's going to be different in its preservation does not matter to you in the same way. So the issue when you're looking at the numbers isn't necessarily black voters going to Donald Trump. It's actually black voters who decide I'm going to stay home. Huh, that's it. Now, the thing is, people, no matter the color of the skin, who they worship or generation they are part of. We all have emotions and feelings. But this talking down to black voters, for example, or black men, could have this Uno reverse card and saying that they're just going to stay home. The more you keep on poking people, the more you keep on antagonizing them, and this goes for everyone, everyone, no matter the color of your skin. If you keep on antagonizing a person saying, oh, how dare, how dare you, not consider voting for Biden or how dare you? You're helping out Trump. You're doing this. You're such a bad person. You know, there is the emotional response of, okay, you keep on pushing me. I might, I might as well vote for Trump because that very well could happen and could inspire many people who will stay home, including black male voters to say to hell with you Democrats. I'll vote for Trump just to piss you off because that could happen. And corporate media, they're very good at talking down to people, as are the blue checkmark people on social media. Never forget what those vote blue no matter who sickle fans did in 2020. Their bullying tactics, their harassment. The, they did everything they could to make everybody feel guilty if they didn't vote for Biden. It's interesting. And when you talk about the kind of existential threats, the Democratic project laying in tatters at the end of a second Trump term or the beginning, do you think the explicit white nationalism is not enough of ah, using identity politics again, BSDNC, very good of you. Corporate commander says this is basically propaganda campaign to tell black folks to stay in their lane and this will actually drive more votes to Trump. Never lie, folks. They don't like that. Folks, folks, folks. People can see through the propaganda. We see through the BS. Everybody across the political spectrum can see the lies of the Democratic Party. And to be clear here, the Republican Party is no better. But the Democrats are being passive aggressive. They're the kind of they're the kind of abuser that will use manipulation and words to make you feel bad, to make you feel sad of a motivator for the same black men that you're talking about who may be less inclined to be energized by the broader proposal around democracy. I think that the message around white nationalism and the broader message around white supremacy is something that resonates. But I also think it's important to understand that if you're someone who has been in America, who has voted for the Democratic Party for generations, and you have not seen substantive changes take place in your community, similar to what Benny the Butcher was talking about, mm -hmm. then you don't necessarily want to give an acknowledgement to Rupert Fellows. World War III is the ultimate existential threat, and Trump has nothing to do with it. Remember in 2020 when everyone was saying that Trump was going to start World War III? I do, and so does Petridge Farm. I really feel the biggest difference between curbside bigotry having an uptick and systemic oppression being maintained. It all seems bad bad for you. And so you're not drawing that distinction. And I think that, again, for one of the reasons that Joe Biden's message is not landing as as squarely as he wants it to is because you're you're too afraid to acknowledge that. You're too afraid to speak on it and speak plainly about it to the audience that wants to hear it. They're open to listening. What are you going to do that's going to be different for me? 
I, I remember from my days when I was out on the campaign trail and in the 2020 election, uh, speaking to voters in South Carolina, which was critical to Joe Biden's ascendance at the top of the Democratic ticket, there was a massive generational divide between older black voters right. and younger black oh, voters. Yeah. And I wonder how much you think this is representative of that, because the older black voters were like, yeah, we're not getting everything we want. We're not getting the attention. We're not getting the the, the policy that we need and deserve. But we all. I just want to uh, acknowledge this one. I told someone I'm going to vote third party and went and he went, but Trump and you're throwing your vote away. That made me gonna. Uh, that made me want to uh, vote uh, third party more. F him. As you should. I encourage. Hey, listen, folks. Embrace your anti-hero arc. Be prepared to live rent-free in people's heads. Prepare to be that person. I- I've had to deal with it, and I have lost friendships because of it. But I've also had people come crawling back to me and say, "Hey, Kit, I'm sorry." Now, this whole segment on black voters. This is propaganda. This is mental abuse. This is a a tactic in which to make young black voters, young and old to be more precise, black men and black women, to feel guilty about exercising their free choice, their sovereign free choice to do the right thing. And that is exercise their vote and give it to a candidate who has earned their vote. Now, I don't care how... Anybody votes for this election cycle. I don't. But I'll be damned if we're just going to let 2020 repeat itself again. People, I encourage all of you to push back. You see someone being bullied and harassed because they're not voting for Biden because of Trump. You see these vote blue no matter who people going after independents and people who are at least exercising their choice. Stand up in solidarity with them because people were bullied. In 2020, people were supposed to be made feeling bad about this, sad about exercising their choice. We saw corporate media part, partake in it. We saw the Democrats take take part, uh, part in this. We saw people who have large social media platforms play that part. We saw people on social media with that coveted blue check mark act the same way, too. If you don't for, vote for Biden, you're a bad person. Well, black men and black women are possibly considering voting for Trump or using that staying home. But remember this, the more you keep pushing somebody, the more they're going to be not accepting accepting your perspective. They just might go against your narrative just to give you this. Let's continue on. Also are just real about the stakes here sure. and what, what a Trump administration would mean for us and the country on whole. I think the issue with it there is we are, in many respects, dealing with a boy who cried wolf situation. Mm. If you think back to Mitt Romney, the conversation then, or even George Bush before then, the conversation was the sky is falling and this is the most important election of our lifetime. Well, we got through George Bush, wherein from many people's perspectives, whether the, the, the indexes and the measurements actually support this, a position that most people feel like is still disadvantageous. And so the, it's not resonating in the same way because people are saying, you guys did this for generations and it didn't work. Mm. So we're at least open to doing something, something different. And I think that that is a big part of the generational divide. Do you, um, the journal report says that black women who are the bedrock of the Democratic coalition in many ways, some of the most reliable voters for Democrats are really interested in third party candidates. That goes to exactly. Now, here comes the war against third party candidates. How dare black people vote for third party candidates? How dare you? Exactly what you were saying, mm-hmm. which is it's either staying home. It's not necessarily going for Trump. It may be staying home. That redounds to Trump's benefit in terms of percentages or being curious about some of these alternative alternative candidates. Can you talk to that a little bit? Did you did you hear tell of third party candidates? Was anybody particularly interesting in communities of color? I think across America, but particularly in the black community and with black men, there is a thirst for another option. I think that people are very much so interested in this other option or if there could be another option, even if it is not viable to win, to at least send a message, hey, you need to court me. You need to pay attention to me. One of the things that has been a huge mistake in this entire dialogue is this notion of trying to shame or scare black men by the saying of, well, you're going to go support Donald Trump. You're handing the election to Trump. Right. Here's the here's the reality, whether we like it whether we agree with it, acting as though this conversation isn't taking place, being mad about it or being in denial about it without addressing the reasons why Mm -hmm. is going to lead to failure. So we have to come to grips with whether we like it or not, whether we think it's factually based or founded in reality is not the issue. No. 
voting third party is a vote for a third party candidate. If a black man or a white man, Latino man, Asian man, Asian women, Latino women, white women, black women, if they choose to exercise their vote for a third party candidate, their one and only single sovereign free choice vote is going to that third party candidate, be it Dr. West, Dr. Jill Stein, the Libertarians, an independent, RFK Jr., whoever. Same thing, too, if they want to go ahead and give their vote to Trump or Biden. Now, if someone votes third party or independent, that's not going to help out Biden or Trump, okay? That vote is going to go to that third party candidate. And I don't want to hear crap about, but the electoral college vote. Well, then listen, listen, listen. If you're so concerned about the electoral college vote, the Democrats, the Democrats, and so many activists and social justice warrior groups could have done everything they could, including those on the right to abolish the Electoral College because it's an antiquated system. Maybe if we had ranked choice voting and actually do what other democracies and republics do, popular vote, maybe then, oh, we can have a very serious conversation. Maybe then you can have more voter engagement. But this Electoral College, until a third party wins one, which I do hope maybe this election cycle we do see, I'm tired of hearing the crap of, oh, it's just going to go to Trump. No, my third party and independent vote is going to go to a third party candidate because they represent my values. The Democratic Party has failed so many times. I cannot support an institution that doesn't represent me. And I'm speaking for myself here. Same time, too, I will not support the Republican Party because the Republican Party is click, copy, paste version of the Democratic Party. The issue is that this sentiment is very real among the people who you need to turn out, and you've got to figure out a way to address it. You, people who feel unseen should not be scapegoated, and the subject of indignation, they need to be spoken to and considered in the comments. Oh, yeah. Now they want to speak to people. Now they want to speak to people. Now they want to speak to people. Here, look at this one. Biden losing support among black voters in swing state survey. Oh, my goodness. What's going on here? Voters, voters are breaking away from Biden and the Democrats. And all of this is so wonderful to see. It's it's hilarious to me. And he's losing black voters in key swing states. We know that Pennsylvania has been brought up, Wisconsin, Michigan, Missouri, Georgia. All of these key states. But it's not my fault that Democrats are losing voters. It's not my fault that Democrats have decided to tie themselves up with the senile old goat. And plus, imagery like this is really triggering. Triggering, too. You guessed it. Liberals. Yeah, can my friend Dom get in one too? This is, she's fun right Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. We're going to get rid of Biden. Yeah! Bye, Biden. Bye, Biden. He is the worst president in the history of the United States. <laughs> and he's horrible to the black community. Like it or not. See, and here's another thing, too. When you're on the campaign trail, you want to show your supporters that you're number one. Let me just introduce to you guys uh, uh, just a, a situation that took place many, many years ago. Y you never heard of this guy, Julius Caesar, right? And during the final day, the Battle of Elysia, in which Julius Caesar and his legions were faced off against Vercingetorix and the Gallic Relief Force, they were being attacked on all sides. It was a dangerous siege, but what did Caesar do? He put on his red cloak, grabbed his sword, told his legionnaires to follow him, and he fought on the front lines, inspiring his men to continue to win and fight. And that's how he won the Battle of Elysia, through tactics and also inspiration. Inspiration by showing his men that he will be there. Now, in realm of politics, you want to be the face. You want to show that your supporters, that your supporters and potential supporters, that you are a strong candidate. Now, Trump, I have my criticism of him, but he's playing a very important role in politics, which is I'm out here on the front lines, I'm reaching out to my voters, and I'm telling people of all colors and creeds to support me. This is something that every single candidate should learn from. Unfortunately, Biden, all he's doing is shuffling and walking around. He's not even to his handlers are making sure he's not even asking, getting questions from the press anymore because he's that senile and old and weak. Tell me again, Democrats, was this a good bet that you made?
The first step egg. Let's talk about it. And again, the colleges and universities. Yeah. Get the whole thing down. Yeah. I got you. Can I get one pizza ready for you? I just want to pull up this other segment here, too. Just a short segment from Fox News. I know, because Fox News is having a field day with this. Hug from Trump at an Atlanta Chick-fil-A uh, while he met with supporters. Watch. I don't care what the media tells you, Mr. Trump. Thank we support you. you. Uh, we support you. you. Okay, 4 p.m. We've been 4 p.m. Come here, let me give you a hug. Please do <laughs> <laughs> See, now, Biden, he'd be like, who are you, Jack? It's 1960. Look at the joy. Here to tell us about it is that young woman herself, Michaela Montgomery. She's also the founder of a grassroots political group to conserve the culture. Uh, Michaela, I've been waiting for this interview all morning. So when I've been waiting for this my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> that, so thanks so much for joining us. So you told the president when you were hugging him, I don't care what the media says, we support you. Tell me what you meant by that. I am so glad that is the first question you asked me. Mm -hmm. So, um, of course, in the excitement of everything, I wasn't able to really relay my message. Yeah. But um, the general consensus or social media would have you thinking that if President Trump were to show up to the HBCU campuses or walk around the ABC community, that like some angry mob would form or a riot would ensue and that he would not be welcomed. And clearly the sentiment in that room the other day was the complete opposite. He was very welcome. People were excited to see him. People showed up in support of him. And people, um, of course, were from all four institutions within the AUC, um, the local HBCU community in Atlanta. And they all showed up in support of them. So it's actually kind of crazy to see people in an uproar when all four institutions were legitimately represented and all four institutions were represented by said students who wanted to support President Trump. You know, McKay And I really appreciate that we were able to not only let him know that regardless of what social media says, you know, I know they're trying to make us think we're supposed to hate you, but we don't. And additionally, it was a learning experience for my students because they were able to see and experience firsthand how the media can warp the perception of an opinion or a person. Because uh, like I said, to think that these students who attend these illustrious institutions aren't smart enough to make their own decisions, That's so right. much so that they would only show support for Trump because he bought chicken sandwiches and milkshakes. It's offensive. That in itself is the most disturbing part of it all, especially when you think about the fact that it was mainly urban media outlets that were doing everything in their power to turn other black people against these young black kids who simply were not shy to explore other options. And I want to stop there. I hope you all of you heard that. You see, corporate media, especially those who live in their fancy towers in New York City, as well as all their affiliates in these other major metropolitan cities like Chicago or Los Angeles or anywhere else, assume that people will fall in line. And MSNBC and CNN are aghast and shocked that young black people would consider supporting or voting for Trump or either that voting third party or staying home. But this is a bigger problem that the Democrats are finally going to have to face. And for I, for one, am happy about it. I am glad that they are going to face this. And that is finally, after talking down to people for so long, their liberal smugness is starting to fall apart. They can't control the narrative anymore, and they're enraged at the fact that people are making that free choice, that sovereign choice, to vote how they want, how they feel. Democrats, you did this to yourselves, and all I can do is sit back, relax, and laugh at all of you, because you are clowns, Democrats, and you talk down to black voters as though they should be subservient to you and give you their votes. Here's the thing. Everybody's waking up to it. We don't owe the Democratic Party a goddamn thing. 